The behind-the-scenes story of what went on in America is simply fascinating. And recently, historian William Federer told us about miracles in American history. Today, we're bringing Bill back to share some of these amazing stories. I welcome you back, my friend. Tell us about and, William Penn. Well, what part does he play in American history? Well, there's always crises, and God raises up little nobodies. William Penn's dad was an admiral in the British Navy who captured Jamaica from the British, defeated the Dutch, which caused New York to go into British hands, and he ushered Charles II back to the throne in England, in return getting the title Sir Admiral William Penn. Well, his son, young William Penn, was at the estate when his dad was at sea and visited by a Quaker missionary who told him about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And young Penn said he began to have divine impressions of the Lord. Well, now he's at Oxford. He's a cavalier, an upper-class student, and he visits a Quaker meeting. Well, the king had passed the Conventicle Act. What was that? It said that if five or more people are meeting, talking religion without approval of the government, they're all criminals and they'll all get arrested. Well, guess what? On campus, there were five or more Quakers, and one of them was young William Penn. He's arrested. The dad fishes him out of prison. Cups happen several different times. Uh, finally, the dad threatens to disinherit the young Penn. He flees to Europe. He travels with George Fox, the founder of the Quakers, comes back. He's imprisoned in the Tower of London for eight months. Well, he's finally out, and the dad is dying and writes to him and says, never allow anyone to have you violate your conscience. Well, uh, the dad had arranged with the king, Charles II, to have favor for the son. So the young William Penn goes in and asks uh, to buy a little sliver of uh, America called West Jersey. King Charles II counters and gives him 45,000 square miles and makes young William Penn the largest non-royalty landowner in the world. And this young William Penn decides he is gonna do a holy experiment and invite Christians of different denominations to come and live together in the same geographic area. He called it a holy experiment with the capital being Philadelphia, City of Love. Well, it's in Philadelphia where the Continental Congress meets and the Declaration of Independence is written and the Constitution is written and the first black churches in America are in Philadelphia. Uh, and so we see that it truly was the seed of a nation. And it started with William Penn's idea of conscience. He says, force makes hypocrites, tis persuasion only that makes converts. So here we are today enjoying this country that started with this seed in Philadelphia of religious towers that went back to this young uh, William Penn who uh, was imprisoned in the Tower of London for his faith. And he actually, the whole thing, I mean, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, the, the city of brotherly love, and uh, that was the capital of Pennsylvania, and the, the state was named after Penn, right? Right, actually named after the father, the, oh, the father, father, Admiral William Penn. Well, great. Well, listen, you also got in your book, it's so fascinating, so many of them, but I want to talk about Booker T. Washington. Well, what about him? 1856, he's born, he's a slave, the Civil War ends, he's free. He walks 500 miles to Hampton Institute in Virginia. And he says that he has a professor or a teacher, uh, Miss Natalie Lord, and she teaches him the Bible. And he learns to love the Bible. He then goes to Wayland Bible Seminary in Washington, D.C. Uh, he is a Sunday school teacher uh, in West Virginia where he works in a salt furnace, goes back to uh, Tuskegee, and they're opening up um, uh, Freeman's universities, uh, colleges for former slaves, and they suggest he be the president. So he's the president of Tuskegee Institute with 33 students. He gets a architect uh, from MIT, he's a black man, um, uh, Robertson, a tailor, and uh, Robert Robertson Taylor, and he comes and they bake the bricks to build the university buildings. He gets George Washington Carver from Iowa State to come and have head up the agricultural department. 
Well, he ends up becoming friends with um, uh, Car Carnegie, the steel uh, leader, uh, John D. Rockefeller. Uh, he's visited by several presidents, William McKinley, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge. He even goes to Europe and has tea with Queen Victoria. And who's there at that same day is um, uh, Anthony, uh, the, hair, the a woman who was the leader in the suffragette movement, um, Susan, Susan B. Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. And so here he starts this university. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt invites him to the Capitol for dinner. He's the first black man to have dinner in the U.S. Capitol, invited by Republican President Teddy Roosevelt. W one of his big issues, there was racism. And he is down there speaking at the Atlanta Exposition, sort of a precursor to the World's Fair. And he uh, is this, uh, he's the keynote speaker. And it has all of the uh, blacks who were former slaves saying, champion our cause. And there's all these Southern Democrats and the uh, different Lincoln was the Republican who freed the slaves. Uh, but uh, so they were like, uh oh, is this guy going to get a little bit um, uh, pushing the edge? And so he gives a speech. And he says a ship was there off the coast of South America, caught in the doldrums where there's no wind. And it sends a message to another ship saying, send water. The other ship sends a message back, put your buckets down where you are. They send the message back, we're dying of thirst, bring water. The message comes back, cast your buckets down where you are. And it happens a third time. Finally, they cast the buckets down and they pull up fresh water. Lo and behold, they're at the mouth of the Amazon River that has 11 million gallons of water come out a minute, and it pushes water 200 miles, fresh water, out into the ocean. And so he says to the Atlanta Exposition, he says to the, the white man, you've known us, you've trusted us, cast down your buckets where you are and trust us. And uh, to us black men, let's take advantage of our opportunity and cast our buckets down where we are. That speech brought a healing and it ended up spreading around the country. And so Booker T. Washington said, I will never allow any man to belittle my soul by making me hate him. And he says, every wise man encourages uh, good relationships with his neighbor, whether he be white or black. Such a great message even for us today. Well, Bill, I appreciate these, these uh, miracles in America's history. And this book, uh, is so incredible. It's put together by your wife from your your uh, American Minutes. Can people get this uh, at bookstores or at Miracles in America? Right, uh, at Amazon.com, or they can go to uh, AmericanMinute.com, which is our website. I send out a, a free daily history email. Uh, but there's so many stories of little nobodies. One is yeah. Charles Finney and his preaching helped start uh, the YMCA, George Williams, and uh, his preaching influenced William and Catherine Booth to start the YMCA. So uh, all their stories of little individual people that have faith and courage in times of crises, and they let the Lord use them to do great things. Well, I, I, these are so American inspiring. <laughs> Please come back with more because I'm just fascinated by it. Isn't this amazing? Uh, wonderful. Yeah, Bill Federer. Uh, yeah. Great. Uh, these are called Miracles in American History, Volume 2 put together by Susie Federer, Bill's wife, from his American Minute. Isn't that great? A wonderful reminder of who we are. Oh, my. And, and the miracles yes. that brought these things to pass. Yes. Okay.